Hey folks, welcome to the Cincinnati Razorback Room once again. Today we're late in April. The teams in the major leagues are beginning to take shape. You can see we got a picture of uh, would-be Hall of Famer on the screen right there. And this is what the video is about today. Is a new set of cards that I've come up with for Star Power Baseball. And it's an individual card, individual player study cards. And today, in just a few minutes, I'm going to touch on this brand new set, and it's a, a set about Barry Bonds. And what it's going to show you is the differences in Barry Bonds and in uh, the beginning, the end, the steroid era, all this stuff. So we'll have a little bit of a discussion and not a lot, but I'm going to show you the cards. And there's Barry right there on the screen, as you can see, in all of his glory. Let's take a look at the first card right here. And this first card, we're going to shrink it down just a tad so that you guys can really see it well. Okay. And there is the career card of Barry Bonds. And then what I'm also going to do here is as I'm putting these cards up, I'm going to do both sides of the card. Okay. So you can see both sides of what I'm getting into here. The first card that we're dealing with is the career card of Barry Bonds. And let's just face facts. The guy was amazing. I mean, 298 batting average, a 1051 OPS. I mean, that's a career OPS. That's insanity, man. That's crazy. Four times in a row MVP, seven-time MVP. He stole bases throughout his career. This guy was just, you know, all that, man. He was all that. Now, you can see here his fielding, great percentage fielder. P5, that's as good as it gets. But he had no arm at all. I mean, he didn't throw people out at all throughout his career. He was not a big assist guy. And that's why he's an R1. R, uh, so you're not going to get a lot of throwouts with Barry Bonds unless you just happen to land on the X <clears throat> on the outfield card. He does get two respins. That's the most you can get as a batter. So the guy's got a great card. Look at the size of these walks, nine and nine. And he is the all-time walks leader. You can see that intentional walks and walks are both coupled in. And he doesn't strike out comparative to his walk at all. He strikes out less than he singles. So you're good there. He's got a great 11. This is his double right here. You can see that. Um, oppo grounder is not good, so you can shift on him. Getting the 7, it's a little bit bigger than the 12. So he would be a, a, a potential shift guy if you were going to use the house rules for shift. But now that's the career card for Barry Bonds. Let's go to card number 2. And what this card is, is Barry Bonds as a Pittsburgh Pirate. This is the young part of his career from 1986 to 1992, seven years with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He did win two MVP awards during that time. But as you can see, comparative to the, to the last card, he's quite a bit different. I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. We'll make these a little bit bigger. see if I can do this here and then stretch it a little bit. There you go. Okay. And you can see that he's now got two strikeouts. He struck out a lot more often with the Pirates. Not near as many walks. Not near as many walks. He was a much better outfielder. Now, he wasn't a P5. He was a 4 but an R3, back in his young days, he could throw you out. And an S5, A5, I mean, look at that. I mean, he's as fast as you can get. I mean, he could be an A5+, plus, but still, just super outfielder right there. But his OPS dropped from 105.1 lifetime to 883. And you would think that the first seven years of this guy's career, the OPS might be close but, I mean, he's 200 points down. <clears throat> so this guy, during the Pittsburgh, and people, people will say, too, well, 
wasn't he a Hall of Famer before the uh, incidents, the accusations, the clouds surrounding him? Well, I'm going to look at that card right there, the Barry Bonds card, and that's not a Hall of Fame card, really. Not a great Hall of Fame card. I, I It might be. I mean, it's close. I mean, the one guy who I could compare Bonds to during that period right there, and i got to pull some stuff up here for you. i got to do this real quick. One of the guys who I can compare the Bonds card to is going to be, let me pull him up here right here, complete alpha list. The card reminds me a lot of this card right here. You see that? See the similarities there? I mean, and Ott's got a higher OPS and an OPS plus than Bonds does during the Pirate days, but the cards are eerily similar. But Ott's got a lot bigger seven than Bonds did, much better average hitter at that time than Bonds was. So you can see what a great comparison that is. Bonds to Ott, and still Ott's better, and 500 homers. So that might have been a 500 home run card. And he might have been a Hall of Famer, but he's definitely not an automatic Hall of Fame guy during the Pirate era. Okay, so let's go to the next card. The next card shows you Barry Bonds with the San Francisco Giants. This goes from 1993 to the end of his career in 2007. Look at the difference in the one. That's the home run. Look at the difference. Look at the difference in the body. There's Bonds right there at the Giants. There he is with the Pirates. Okay? Look at the walk difference. The nines, huge, because they began really just putting him out there. Bonds hit more doubles as a youngster. Okay, he, the singles are pretty close to the same thing. They hit a few more singles with the Pirates than he did with the Giants. But with the Giants, he won five MVPs. And with that card, you can definitely see why. Now that is a Hall of Fame card. The one guy who I can really compare him to on that one is this guy right here. That's the comparison I can give you there. Bonds and Ruth are they're close to the same card. Ruth gets more hits for average. That way, that's why his OPS is a little higher. Also hits more doubles. But you can see here the home runs are about the same. Strikeouts are about the same. Oppo grounders are about the same. Ruth hits a few more triples. That's the five. Twelve is Oppo grounder, by the way. That's one of the things I always look at is seven and twelve. For when I'm going to shift for a guy because I like playing the shift. I enjoy it. Okay. Bond sits a lot more anywhere fly balls. Ruth tends to pull more fly balls. Pulled grounder there on a two. Two is a pulled grounder. Four is a pulled fly, fly ball. So there's your comparison. And then when you're comparing somebody to Babe Ruth, I mean, you're in really elite company, a total elite company right there. Okay. Our next card is Barry Bonds in his greatest season. His greatest season was 2001. He hit 73 home runs. And this card is probably one of the most incredible cards ever out there. And the guy had a 328 batting average with 73 home runs. Look at the size of that number one. During a game, you think you could land on that every other game or so? I think you can or you're going to walk him. Lots of nine. Nine's the walk. He also tended to strike out a lot more during that season. Infield pop-up, very little singles, not much there. Didn't get a lot of pulled singles. They uh, shifted for him quite a bit. Eleven's a double. Uh, good size still. Very small triple. He had slowed down immensely. His fielding, he still had kind of an arm, but his percentage had gone down because he just wasn't as good anymore during those years. But he was a base stealer. He stole, I think, uh, 15, 18 bases that year and only got thrown out once or twice. The guy was knew when to run and how to run. Okay? 11.9 uh, war. That was just off the chart. You don't see that anymore today. If 
but the size of the home run. There's his lifetime, there's his Pirates, and there's his greatest season. And look at the body there compared to the body there. There's Barry Bonds in 2001. And right here is Barry Bonds in, I want to say, 1987. 86, 87. Okay. Let's go to the next one. The next one is Barry Bonds during his peak. Okay. This is a four season study where he won the MVP four consecutive times. And I would consider that his peak. I mean, you're the MVP four times in a row. I believe that's the peak of your career. You're the best player in the game four years in a row. And that's the peak. Look at the difference now. He doesn't strike out all that much compared to his walk. He walks a lot. He gets more walks than hits during this time. His at-bat to home run ratio. Every eight at-bats, not plate appearances, but every eight at-bats, he hits a home run. That's every other game if you didn't walk him, which would be once every basically two and a half games the guy puts a bomb out there. Unbelievable. My phone's going crazy right now, so I guess people are trying to get a hold of me. You, you can wait. Anyway, this is Bonds. Look at the OPS at 1.368 with a 349 batting average for these four years. That's off the chart. Nobody hits 349 today in their peak. And he did it over a four-year period. Again, two respins. This is a 20-point card. Look at his peak year, 20. That's what Bonds tops out at. He tops out at 20 points. That's what he tops out at. Okay. And the last card that we're going to look at for Barry Bonds is him performing in the postseason. He was in nine total playoff series. <clears throat> He played in one World Series, and I think two playoff series for the Giants, and then six or seven with the Pirates. So that's why I put him in a Pirates uniform for this. You can see his home run is not that big. His walk is. He didn't strike out a lot, but he did strike out some. Singles, doubles. He popped up a lot. The guy popped up a lot. And he only batting averaged at 245. His home runs were at 17 which really is about his average um, with the Pirates. 20 with the Pirates, 17 overall. And a lot of that has to do with his final season with the uh, uh, playoff World Series Giants in, in uh, 2000, what was it, 2002, I believe. Anyway, 2001, 2000, whatever it was, they lost to the Angels. Had a 3-1 lead and blew it, or 3-2 lead and blew it. Anyway, Dusty Baker, hard luck guy. I had to manage this guy. That's a series where Snow picked up his little kid. Yeah, it was awesome. Anyway, that's my study of Barry Bonds. Uh, so you can see all of his cards. Postseason, peak seasons, greatest season, Giants only, Pirates only, and Lifetime. All these cards are legal to play if you do a point system because they're all rated for their points. And he ranges anywhere from, uh, what does he range, for? anywhere from 20 to 17, no, 14. He was 14 points with the Pirates and 20 points overall, which is the highest that he ever was. Hope you enjoyed that uh, little walk through memory lane with Barry Bonds right there. And uh, if you want to get those cards, it's really inexpensive to buy those. That whole set comes on premium photo paper, um, six cards, four bucks includes postage. Contact me at warhammerworld at hotmail.com. That's W-A-R-H-A-M-M-E-R-W-O-R-L-D at hotmail.com. This is Dennis signing off again. Remember, dice are nice, but the spin is in. Keep on spinning until next time.